more often than not, people are collecting NFTs because they believe in the artist um, and they, they like the art, of course, but it's really that like relationship that's being built. And so for people um, who are entering the space for the first time, like think about why you're entering it and then be willing to put time into it. Welcome to the X11 Metaverse Web3 and Digital Art Podcast. In this episode, we talk to Emily Drury, Director of Marketing for Voice, a carbon neutral NFT platform. Hey, Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so great to see you again. Um, do you want to maybe quickly introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your background before we begin? Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for the conversation. So my name is Emily Drury. I am the head of marketing at Voice, which is an NFT marketplace focused on emerging artists. Um, I actually come from a media background. I began my career in publishing, um, studied journalism, wanted to um, kind of be a part of the storytelling in the media industry. Um, but ended up falling in love with startups. And so fast forward quite quite some time, I um, joined Voice as one of the first employees um, and have been here um, for about two and a half years now, um, you know, fulfilling our mission of supporting creators using blockchain technology. Uh, amazing. I actually really was curious to know like what you were doing before joining Voice. So I would love to hear a little bit more about that, about, you know, your journey. How did you end up there? Yeah, so I, I I spent the bulk of my early career um, in the newsroom at Forbes, where I kind of built out the the social team um, and spent a lot of time with reporters figuring out, okay, as you're going to report on a story, um, what kind of multimedia do you need to capture in order to successfully tell that story, not just on the in the pages of the magazine, but also across social media. Um, and so I kind of fell in love with the idea of producing video content. Um, I, I launched a live streamed news show that I ran for a while. Um, just got to really experiment and play around with um, how we connect with audiences. And, and when I look back, it's like I was doing early community work before community was really a buzzword um, and, and trying to figure out on each platform, we have a different audience. How do we engage with them? Um, and from there, I ended up in a um, kind of brand new role at NASDAQ where I helped um, companies that were preparing to IPO with their storytelling. So when a company IPOs, it's a very big deal for both um, the company, their investors, their employees, um, and their audience as well. So looking at, you know, what kind of um, social media storytelling do you need to do on leading up to on IPO day and beyond? Um, and from there, then we're, we're heading into pandemic time. Um, I got a call from someone I had worked with at Forbes, um, Salah Zalatimo, who is the CEO of Voice, and he had a really interesting proposition, which was um, we are using blockchain to enable a fair share of rewards to creators, basically anybody who's posting on social media, anyone who's using the internet to produce content. Um, and because that aligned with so much of what I had been doing throughout my career and just personally, I, I believed in it. Um, I took the leap and and came on board here. So everything that I've kind of done in the past, um, you know, in addition to some startup consulting that I've done has really led me um, to this place. So interesting. We saw that there was uh, an email that came out recently that you're kind of switching the kind of business model at Voice. Could you maybe talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So when we started work on our NFT marketplace, we did a lot of research into like what was what existed in the space, like what kind of gaps did artists have, did collectors have, did everybody feel like um, was necessary. This is back in 2021 um, when the the you know NFTs were the hottest thing. Um, there was a ton happening. Everybody is like launching projects left and right. Um, but one thing that wasn't happening was accessibility into the space. So people were ending up in NFTs because they were crypto experts, part of the crypto community, um, or super tech savvy, right? They were able to kind of like code and launch their project. Um, and that we learned that there was this whole like group of people who were curious, kind of like crypto curious or NFT curious, but they were like, I don't understand how to do this. I don't understand 
how to set up a wallet and put crypto in it and link it to a, a platform and pay gas fees and, and all of these things. Um, and there was also the environmental concern as well. So we thought we would launch a marketplace on a private chain um, so that we would be able to kind of solve some of those concerns, right? So environmental friendliness, we are built on an environmentally friendly chain um, and uh, no gas fees, again, because of the private chain. And we were able to kind of bring this like web 2.5 approach um, into the ecosystem that didn't exist. So you signed up with your email address, not a wallet. Um, and like very quickly, uh, there was demand for it from an artist perspective, like thousands and thousands of artists were joining because they felt like they hadn't had a space before. Um, and we were like the introduction to NFTs. And then people would like find success on voice. And if they wanted to go and code their own project, they did, um, which is amazing. And we did that for about a year. And then, you know, 2022, the crypto market changed, the NFT market changed, like we're in crypto winter. And, um, you know, some of the technology has matured. And, and certainly a lot of people have left the space, um, those who have been focused on kind of speculation and a quick buck, and all of that. And like, as that dust settles, you know, we, we were, we really sat down and said, like, okay, what do we, what are we offering that people still need? Um, and what is holding our artists back from success? And ultimately, um, it was that collectors are looking for something on the public chain um, that they can, you know, those assets can interact um, with the rest of the ecosystem. So we made the decision to um, close our private chain. Um, and depending on when this comes out, um, by the end of 2022, um, our platform will undergo some changes and we'll have the ability to mint direct to Ethereum and Polygon and EOS. So it's it's kind of a, a shift based on both everything that we've learned over the past year and then both also what our artists and our collectors have asked for and also what's happening in the space beyond ourselves. So it's been kind of a natural evolution into uh, where it is now. Yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciate, um, you know, you saying that you like, you know, voice really focused on catering to people who were crypto curious. Um, because I, I remember when, um, I was working with voice about a year ago or so. Um, and I had the opportunity to mint on voice. It was so exciting, but I think it was around the time where the gas fees were so high, like hundreds of dollars just to mint even one piece. So it was really exciting for artists like me to be like, okay, I can actually participate in this and I don't have to spend so much money on just putting my work out there in the market. So I really appreciate you doing that for artists when it was really, really needed at the time. Yeah. And I, and I, to clarify too, like what we're doing now is like, you know, as we switch onto these public chains, like it will still be free for artists to create the, the gas fees to mint um, will will fall on the collectors. Um, so we, you know, we're building everything with um, an, an artist in mind. Um, and because block, uh, Polygon is an option, um, it also we're covering the gas fees for that. So there, we're we're still trying to really think through everything that we're doing to make sure it's really sustainable from um, an artist perspective. And we think that like our artists will have more success um, from a collector perspective in this way as well. Oh, interesting. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it seems like you're really thinking about the creators on your platform. And I guess I just wanted to, before we move on to the next question, I just wanted to ask like, if you had to summarize in a nutshell, what separates voice from other NFT platforms to you, in your opinion? So we have this kind of uh, cheeky phrase that we've been using is like, it's here for the art. It's all about the art. Um, and, and that is something that has guided us um, through this evolution that that I've been talking about is that um, we think that the value of digital art stands on its own and speaks for itself. And so, you know, while some people um, are coming to, you know, collect an NFT and then flip it and make more money off of it, that's great, but only if it benefits the artist. So, you know, one of the conversations that um, is really big right now in the space is, is creator royalties, right? Um, you know, we've come out pretty, pretty strongly and said, like, we're not ever getting rid of creator royalties like that's what the whole thing is about for us um and so yeah our platform the different trader is is our focus on um the artists our audience i love that <laughs> so actually i met you when we were working together on a project for musidi central and i know yeah. the voice is really focused on community projects i just wondered if you had any interesting community events coming up Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, heading into the holidays, um, not so much. Um, we are launching a really cool 
collection um, called The Land of Milk and Honey, which features um, artists from um, Palestine and Lebanon and other um you know, areas nearby celebrating their homelands, which is going to be really cool and launching in mid-December. So we're working together with those communities um, on that project. And then heading into 2023, once our platform makes the transition, we're super excited to um, get back into some of these community, community projects like galleries, virtual galleries, in real life galleries, all of the above. That's really exciting. I really can't wait to see um, where voices going to go, you know, in 2023, really something to look forward to. And um, I'm wondering for you, are there any artists that you like really love working with? You know, um, I imagine you get to work with so many interesting people. So I would love to hear more about that. Oh my gosh, that's such a hard question. It um, is not to put you on the spot, <laughs> but I'm just so curious. <laughs> no, they're amazing. So we just actually wrapped our, um, or not quite, but we're about to wrap a project that we did in partnership with Photo Vogue, which is um, Conde Nast's photography community. And so we had 80 artists, 80 photographers from around the world do it. Many of them, their very first NFT collections. And they were all so incredible to work with, like very excited, very open to learning. Um, and the collections that they produced were amazing. Um, and so even getting to interact with some of them, um, you know, I, I was kind of like, uh, there were some folks on my team who obviously were more involved in the project, but um, anytime I heard them talk about their stories, it was, it was just really, um, really moving. I think that like, it, it is one of the best parts of our job is getting to talk to artists directly and hear like why they're, why they're an artist and, and why they produce the, the work that they that they do. Um, and I think that there's some people who um, their art is obviously really fascinating, but how they're going about it is really interesting. So we've worked with um, Autumn Brian um, for a few of her NFT collections, and she is doing a project um, about equal play, equal pay for black women. So she's looking at all of the time it takes for a black woman to um, earn the same amount as a white man earns in a year. And then she's talking to people about like, what would you do with that extra time that you had? Um, and so she's producing some really beautiful, beautiful art about that topic. And then she's minting those NFTs in collaboration with the people who are giving her the responses so that they share um, in the the earnings as well when those NFTs sell. So things like that just really kind of make me feel amazing that this, that this platform is facilitating um, projects from people like Autumn. So powerful. It really yeah. is. Amazing. I, I, that really uh, leads me to wonder, like, what are your thoughts on how Web3 can empower artists? Yeah, uh, so many ways. I think, you know, a big piece of it is transparency, right? Um, like, you know, I didn't come from the traditional art world, and I've learned so much over the past few years about how it works. And it just seems that at, you know, every step of the way, there is a barrier, or there's a wall, or there's some sort of kind of like, hidden cost or hidden um, burden that that artists need to to overcome. And so I think this idea that like you can go onto the site and you can see an NFT, you can see how much it costs, you can buy it and then watch it like move throughout the market and like extremely transparently is just amazing. Um, and I think that, you know, people refer to it a lot of the time as like cutting out the middleman. Um, I think that's part of it, but it's also just empowering um, to be in control of your of your work and and what happens to it. Um, and like in Autumn's um, case, like choosing to split proceeds with her collaborators is something that um, would probably take contracts and like all sorts of paperwork um, previously, but now it's just a few clicks um, and that comes to life. So I think there's you know yeah transparency, um, you know easy facilitation of collaboration. Um, and I think uh, there's just so much more too. There's like, there's this idea that, um, so much of what's happening in web three is community led, led, excuse me, community led, um, that is going to be a game changer for, for a lot of people. But I really love your, uh, your positive answer. Um, I, I'm really excited to hear all of that as well, you know, being so active in this, in the space. Um, but I'm wondering, you know, there's, people have mixed opinions on the state of Web3 and NFTs today, um, you know, with all the kind of dodgy projects that are going on. And uh, it has been discouraging some people. So I would love to hear your opinion on on that and like the state of affairs today. 
Yeah, it's a great point. And I think that, you know, it, it it's important to remember where we are in the in the trajectory of Web3, right? Like we're still so, so very early that um, as with any new technology, there's going to be, um, you know, players who take advantage and, and come in with, with um, bad intentions. And we kind of, I think that one of the things that's happening in Crypto Winter is a lot of those players who weren't here for, for the right reasons have kind of fled the scene. And so things, um, you know, felt really shook up for a while. Um, but then it's like the people who are still here for the right reasons um, are the ones who are rebuilding. So I think that, um, you know, we, we need to be patient. Um, and also, like, you know, given what's going on in the crypto spaces, like, there have been these um, projects that have been scams or rug pulls and all of that. But like, we figured it out because everything is visible on the blockchain. And like, that might not have been so possible um, if we were using older technology. So I do think that there is um, yeah, a, a certain element of patience to be had, um, as well as like, you know, remembering that if this space is community led, then we have to behave the way that we want everything to, um, to proceed. And, and those who are building, um, if, if they're, you know, acting in the best interest of, of their community, then I think that ultimately they're the ones who are going to come out ahead and, and really lead the, the space forward. So I'm an optimist um, for sure. Um, and I think that like, you know, we're in a bit of a discouraging space right now where people are kind of pulling back or, you know, um, the skepticism is is definitely around. Um, and like I said, I think that it's it's healthy. Um, and that, you know, things are going to pick up again next year with the, the right people and the right players involved. Definitely. I've been involved in blockchain since 2014. So there's already been, this is like my third crypto winter. And normally what happens is that everybody who was here just at, for curiosity and because of the headlines and stuff leaves. And then the people who are really interested in building something, you know, hustle and build. And then when things pick up, they really like can do well and prosper. And then everybody sees that things are doing well and tries to jump back in. And it's like, well, now you're kind of maybe a bit too late. Right. Like there, there's never a magic bullet, right? Like anything that seems too good to be true is probably that. Um, and I think that that's a lot of what we've experienced over the past year is people thinking like, oh, this is a easy way to make millions of dollars or this is, you know, um, th yeah, it just feels like the people who understand that this is hard work and building, um, hopefully it wants to benefit from it. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is like chasing headlines. Like when things are going well, it pays for the, the media to like report on this person made 69 million, this person made so much. When things are going bad, it's, it pays for them to like focus on, oh, this thing went wrong. This is going bad. And it's just like the, the tone of the media. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And it like kills me when that's the only thing that people know about. <laughs> like I'll, I'll say, I'll meet somebody new. I'll be like, I work in NFTs. And they're like, oh, is that the pictures of the monkeys? Like 90% of the time, <laughs> that's the first answer. And I'm like, ah, yes, but actually it's, it's this, right. And, and it's, it's virtual art exhibitions in the metaverse. It's, it's, um, you know, bringing together artists from all different walks of life from around the world. Like there's so much more to it. Um, and I think that many people in the media have have started to understand that it's kind of like a consistent, um, like yes, the anything that has millions of dollars and celebrity names is going to be an easy easy win. Um, but I've started to see articles that are like, okay, after you know after everything kind of crashed a little bit, like who's still building and why. Um, and I think that that would be a very smart strategy, again, from a media background, like that would be a very smart strategy to take is is to dig through and see who's still around and um, and follow them and, and root for them. I'm totally with you. And I also feel really optimistic about this process. And I'm hoping that, you know, third time's the charm, third winter, hopefully will um, allow people to actually understand the potentials of the technology rather than just see dollar signs. Because I still, even today, like I'm really laughing at the, oh, NFTs, that's those monkeys, right? Because that's literally what my own brother said to me a few months ago when I mentioned yep. that I'm an NFT artist. So um, I just think it's so funny that, you know, to us, it's such a part of our daily lives and a part of our dialogue, but a lot of people are still not seeing the technology for what it is. So I'm really hoping that 
once the kind of financial hype isn't the first thing people focus on, that we'll be able to actually, you know, have further discussions on like what the technology actually is and how it can benefit us in so many ways. Absolutely. And there's been some really big news, like, for example, Instagram announcing that they're launching NFTs on Polygon and Reddit <clears throat> just announced uh, or gave people avatars on Polygon and they're doing really well. And so you have these also signals from some of the biggest like industry leaders that they're adopting the technology. So that's really exciting. That makes me curious about like, what are your thoughts about the future of Web3 and blockchain? Yeah, so I would say that like in the, order for this to work and for everything to go as like mainstream as as we might some of us might want it to, um, we'll have to move away a little bit from like the details of the technology, right? Like people knowing different chains and how they work, and yeah, you know, like there's a lot of like tech details, and that in the future um, I think will be less important to consumers. They just want it to work, right? So like what some people gleaned from the headlines that you're talking about were that Meta chose Polygon. What other people gleaned was like, was, oh, I can do NFTs on Instagram. Um, and I think that like, you know, as with any, any technological advance, like it starts tech first, um, but then it becomes like utility and like value, um, value led. So for people to truly, um, get involved and for this to kind of really be the future of digital transactions um we need to talk more about like why this is so amazing and not necessarily how it works it's like i don't know how streaming works but i know that i can like open up netflix and watch tv like event like when that first happened like that like when netflix stopped selling you know sending you dvds in the mail and and putting stuff up on their platform like I'm sure some people understood that change, but I I didn't. I missed it. Um, and so I think like that's where our space is going to go eventually. And then like the the people who do understand the tech, it's amazing, and they're the ones who are going to keep innovating and moving us forward. But everybody else is, just needs to work. Good point. <laughs> Very good point. Um, and uh, okay, so I also wanted to ask you this, Emily. Uh, let's. What would be your advice for artists who are just now wanting to get into the space be patient i think that and and you know there's a lot of really good tweet threads about this that i've seen from folks in the space is like this as we've talked about like this is not a magic bullet like this is not a like kind of upload and automatic win situation this is the same kind of relationship that you might build with a collector in the traditional art world um it's going to feel different and it's going to take place on different platforms it might be on social media um it might be in a, a virtual exhibition but like you still have to build a relationship with somebody for them to want to spend money on your work um like more often than not people are collecting nfts because they believe in the artist um, and they they like the art, of course, but it's really that like relationship that's being built. And so for people um, who are entering the space for the first time, like think about why you're entering it and then be willing to put time into it. Like we've done a few artist residencies over the last year and like worked with a bunch of different cohort cohorts who are entering the space for the first time. And like it takes like four months for somebody to get up and running, like, you know, building their community, like understanding this, the the lingo and like how to price their NFTs and how many to mint and all of those things. So for somebody entering, like, don't be afraid to start, um, but also like, don't expect uh, uh, like immediate results. Um, be, be patient and willing to experiment. That's really, really good advice. And I would totally agree with that. Um, I think, yeah, artists need to keep in mind that it does take time, as you said, to build a community kind of build your presence, let people know about who you are as an artist. I find that that's a pretty important aspect of the communities. Like they also want to know who the artist is behind the work. In my opinion, that's been a very powerful tool to be able to kind of introduce yourself to people. And um, yeah, those are all really, really great ideas. Yeah. Well, and we're also like working against like, you know, a lot of people aren't trustworthy of the space you know the space isn't trustworthy yet like people are like skeptical so it's like you need you have to work extra hard to prove like one that you are who you say you are right like there's unfortunately like you know an uphill battle there um but also like you know we tell artists all the time like showcase your progress videos like talk about how you made what you made because people are still like not sure what digital art even is um much less why they should 
collect it and and the more like transparent and authentic that you are um the more you're going to kind of break down, down those barriers and misunderstandings that's really really nice to hear yeah that's and I'm, I'm taking this advice for myself as well <laughs> <laughs> also people do there's something so satisfying about seeing uh work come together and to see how the artist arrived at where they ever arrived i i love watching um, especially i love other 3d artists i'm a 3d artist and i love when uh people post their um like screen recording of them making their models oh my and gosh I'm so fascinated by it but i never do it i think i've done it once and it's because i had to for this commission <laughs> yeah and uh yeah, yeah it's so funny <laughs> And it's inspiring too, right? Like more people, like, you know, I, I know that there's some element of like, oh, I don't want to reveal exactly how I've made something because it could be replicated. But I think there's something also about like how much hard work it is like to produce a piece of 3D art. Um, the more that people see that, um, I think it's easier to attribute value to it. It's so true. A lot of people don't realize just how many programs your average 3D artist has to use in order to make what they make. Uh, so yeah, it's also really great to educate your community however you can, you know, like not even educate them about how to replicate what you're doing, but even educate them on what it takes to produce a certain work of art. It's really fascinating. I, it is. And it's like, you know, of course, because I think in form of social media, I'm thinking of a tweet of like, here's all of the things that I had to, all of the tools that I used and here's how much time I spent on you know, on each of them. And then here's the final result. Like what you see is, is a, it's like a math equation, right? Like ten, an hour in here plus two hours in here plus um, uh, everything else to, to produce what you finally see. So true. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> and on that note, we were wondering if you had any advice for people who are getting into buying NFTs. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think we're really in a place of um, requiring a personal connection. Like, I probably would not collect from somebody that I had not um, spoken with, um, not necessarily like in person, That though that is ideal. And that's why we still are doing in-person events. Um, but, you know, on a panel or on a uh, Twitter spaces or, or something, um, because I think that that is to me, like, again, it's like the personal connection. Like I want to, like, I've now worked with both of you. And so I now like, I trust you. And I also like understand a little bit more of where your art comes from. Um, and so I think that like, that's the ideal state, right? Is a personal connection or a, or a reference, right? Like there's a lot of people on Twitter saying like, hey, you're looking to buy 3D art. Like, here's my friend, I vouch for them. Um, and that's also like where community building comes into play, right? Um, it's a win-win. So I would say, you know, definitely look for those personal connections, um, certainly research, um, you know, the artist, do they have accounts on other sites? Do, have you seen similar work elsewhere? Have they, you know, talked about their, that's the other thing is like, when you show progress, like you also prove that you are the creator of the piece that you're selling. Like there's, there's a lot of value to that. And so I would say like, if you don't see, if it's a brand new account and there's, no progress and there's no connections and there's no engagement. Like I get a little bit wary of that. I think it's really great too, to hear people's stories. <clears throat> like for example, when I was working at Musée De Decentral, I'd be working with different artists. And then I was talking to someone one day and they said, Oh, I'm actually a U.S. veteran. And I had like a really debilitating injury. And so art is very therapeutic for me and they gave me this really long explanation and all of a sudden their work just seemed like more amazing because yeah. I really understood like kind of like the pain and, and the process and it's the same for me with music or art like if you hear a song you're like oh that's pretty good and then you hear like oh this person was homeless for 10 years they overcame all this stuff and then all of a sudden you can like really feel it like you take a you just see it differently kind of so it's really great to like know the story and yeah see the process and all of that a hundred percent I completely yeah. agree with that it's really great especially you know we have so many tools to connect with people globally and to tell our story it's you know I can't imagine how what artists did before the internet I mean how do you get to know someone <laughs> so now it's yeah it's just you know anyone can have like a million ways to show where they're from 
to, I, I don't know, post photos of where they grew up or anything that kind of shows the, us who they are and helps us to feel connected with this person. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And I think that like, you know, the other thing that the internet has facilitated is this kind of like cross border collaboration that, that wasn't possible before is like within the last month, I've talked to artists from like, you know, multiple continents and places I've never been. And who knows if I'll ever get to go and, and just to, to have a little glimpse inside somebody's life um, in a place that's so different from, from where I live or where I've ever been. Um, allows you to connect with the art on a, a completely different level. It's really cool. It really opens your eyes also to like di viewing the world in different ways. Cause we live in like a, our own little world and everything makes sense to us. But then when you understand how life would be for someone in a different country and different, even just different climates, different political systems and stuff, you really kind of can understand like, what would my life be like if I was there? Yeah. hundred percent. It's really amazing. And it's also really great, um, especially for digital artists, because you can collaborate with artists from all over the yeah. world. And this has been one of my favorite things to engage in in the last few years, because I can connect with someone yeah, on a different continent and we can work in a piece together or we can work on, you know, they provide the music, I do the visuals. And then, you know, you get to know the person in this process. And it's just so amazing, even though you've never met them in real life, because you're both working with digital tools, you can just create one thing that's that originated in, you know, completely different parts of the world. And uh, it's so interesting. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. And, and you know, I, I myself am not an artist. Um, I wish I had more than a, like a tiny inkling of creativity in my my bones. But I think that like, you know, everybody finding out what everybody has to contribute um, has has been really amazing. Like, you know, uh, you mentioned the idea of like visuals and music, right? But then there's also like, I've also been learning about like AI poetry and, you know, somebody who is like, there's a writer collaborating with it, like somebody who's writing code. Like there's so many different ways that people are figuring out to work together beyond like any kind of collaboration that I had ever imagined. So it's just a really exciting time to be a part of it. It's so true. Even collaborating with AI. I also just love that idea too. Like, do you, what are your thoughts on um, uh, generative art uh, done with AI? Yeah. So I, I would, I'll admit that it's not a space that I've like gone super deep into yet. Um, I think that like, you know, what I have seen in, in glimpses on social media and even on our own platform is there's so much potential there. There's also kind of this like, fear that people have that I have a little bit of too that it's like how much is the AI contributing versus the human and you know is is this um are we going down a slippery slope of of computer generated and and non-human created art I think that there's that but it would it's definitely something that I want to learn more about and and continue to watch as it evolves because I think that I'm mean, I've seen some stuff that's like visually blows my mind um and so there's definitely something amazing about it but um I'm, I'm not an expert by any means fair enough we're also all just still learning you know yeah exactly exactly <laughs> I, I mean what are what are you guys excited about right now because I, I think that you know I've been really heads down as we we're working on our on our platform relaunch um and so yeah what are you excited about Ooh, where do we start? Aaron, you want to begin? <laughs> yeah, well, we're actually working on a new project together where we're building like a metaverse based on kind of Stacy's ideas. And we're trying to really build a metaverse. A lot of the metaverses that exist are very much just a recreation of the world, like a, like a museum or even they built a Walmart metaverse, right? Like just recreations of places you can actually just go physically. So we wanted to build somewhere that you couldn't go physically so people can really transport themselves to like a new world. And so that's kind of like the idea. So we've just been working really hard on that. Yeah. And we want to kind of showcase that a metaverse can be a work of art because um, I think a lot of people still don't see it as that, but it can be such a powerful medium for storytelling so Aaron and I, yeah, without revealing too much um, until it's released, but yeah, it's basically going to be an ongoing art project where we tell a story through this metaverse. 
So in a nutshell, that's what we've been working on a lot these days. So really excited to release it soon. That's amazing. And it's, when you said that, Erin, it, it like, it made so much sense. Like, why are we trying to recreate the spaces that we already have? Like, it, it, it's just, yeah, I had never, I had never thought about that. So really excited to see what you guys have built. 